Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at all the 100 series origin ships and going over what they have in common, what the differences are between them, and talk about who each one of these ships would appeal to the most and why. So let's start by taking a look at their similarities. All three of the ships have the same outer chassis, which means they also have the same dimensions with regards to their height, length, and width. They all have an externally located access port for the quantum drive which is located in the front right side of the vessel's nose. And its two cooler components are located in the back and on the underside of the ship next to the landing gear. All the 100s have a single entrance that's located on the left side of the vessel. After you open the sliding door, a set of three steps will extend out and form a makeshift ramp that you can walk up and directly into the cabin of the ship from. The interior space for all these vessels are nearly exact copies of each other. Along the back wall is an access port that opens up to reveal several component housings, including the power plant and the shield generator. This area also has space that's been left open for several more components to be added in later on. Most likely, I'm guessing, is going to be for life support and avionics. Below the components is a hatch that allows for internal access to two SEUs worth of cargo space. All these ships have a minimum cargo capacity of two SEUs, and it's weirdly enough space for a couple of people to crouch down and hide within, so you can do what you want with that information. The right wall of the ship's cabin is dominated by a bed that you can use to log out of the game from, which I've repeatedly stated that this is one of my favorite amenities for a ship to have. Another thing that all these ships have in common is what they're referring to as the air system, which is an anacronym for the adaptive intake refinery. No other ships are going to feature the air fuel system. It's proprietary tech that was developed by Origin and specifically built for the 100 series. It allows the ship to extract an unprecedented variety of gases from space of the upper atmosphere and convert the raw material into plasma, making the 100 series the most fuel efficient ship on the market for its size. Another good thing about the air system is that a while back the trend was to start removing fuel scoops from a lot of the smaller ships. But not only is the 100 guaranteed to keep its scoop, because like with the Razor it's been integrated into the vessel both physically and as part of its lore, so you're never going to have to worry about it being removed. And in addition to that, it's going to have the best fuel scoop that a small ship could possibly own. For weapons, all the 100 series have had a significant upgrade from what it's listed as having on the ship matrix. The first change is that each of the ships has two size 3 weapon hardpoints now instead of size 1s. And by default, they come with two gimbaled size 2 guns with the option to upgrade them to a pair of fixed size 3s. Another thing that's common to all the 100 series ships is that they come with two size 2 CS missiles. These missiles are housed in a compartment that's located on the underside of the nose of the ship. They all have the same number of components that are all the same size, and they also have the same level of survivability. When it comes to being transported by another vessel, the Carrick and the 890 Jump are the only two flight-ready ships that can currently transport it. The 890 can carry all three of the 100 series at once, while the Carrick can barely fit one into its scout bay. When I say barely fits, I mean that if it had a second coat of paint, then you wouldn't be able to get into the scout bay at all. It's going to bang around a bit as you ease it in, and the tires won't make full contact with the ground after you've landed. But you can shut the bay doors behind it and go into quantum travel while it's inside. The 100i is the basic model in this series, but its official focus is on being a touring vessel, and it could be best described as a little brother to the 300i. It's envisioned to be a halfway point between the Aurora MR and the Mustang Alpha when it comes to maneuverability. The 100i handles slightly better than the 135C, while the 100i and the 125A are very closely matched when it comes to maneuverability, but the increased speed and defensive loadout makes the 125A better at combat. However, the differences that exist between these ships are far less than what you'd see when comparing larger vessels. Its top speed is slightly faster than the 125A and slightly slower than the 135C. The 100i has the same basic functions that are found within all the other vessels that fall into the 100 lineup. It has the same basic weapons package, it has the air fuel scooping system, it has the same sleek looking origin chassis, and it's the cheapest option out of all of them. This means that you'd have all these features and a ship that's bundled with a game package for the least expensive price. And you could then use this ship to get a better vessel with the money that you've earned in game. The 125A is the light fighter variant in the series. It has the same basic handling and level of maneuverability as the other ships and accelerates at the same rate, but it has a faster top speed than the other two ships do. While the 100I is intended to fall right down the middle between the other two starter ships, the 125A was meant to be a closer match for the Mustang, particularly when it comes to speed and combat prowess. It has a total of six size 2 SC missiles, 
And two of them are stored in the nose like you'd find with the other vessels. And it has four more of them housed internally in the same space that the 135C uses to store additional cargo. The rotary loading mechanism for these missiles is very similar to what the Eclipse has, but it's on a much smaller scale. There is one other thing about the 125A that sets it apart from the rest of the series, and it's that it comes stock with all military grade components, while the other ships have a default loadout that consists of all civilian class components. I can see this ship as being an easy choice for people who like the 100i, but want to have more speed and an increased missile capacity, and don't want to have to sacrifice any additional features in order to get it. The 135C is the cargo variant for the 100 series. Its main difference is that it holds an additional 4 more SCUs of cargo within a rear compartment, giving it a total carrying capacity of 6 SCUs. This compartment is completely enclosed, and can be accessed by a ramp that's located in the back of the ship. It should be noted that the internal compartment that houses the 2 SCUs of cargo is completely separate from the space within the ship that holds the 4 SCUs of cargo. So they're going to be two different cargo grids, and the 4 SCUs grid is only accessible from the outside of the ship. The 135C has the slowest top speed that you'll find among the other ships in the 100 series. I took a look at the rear ramp and just had to see if I could get any type of vehicle inside of it. Generally speaking, if you can't get a Grey Cat buggy inside of a ship, then you're not going to be able to get anything. This may change once the Rangers become available, but for now, the smallest measuring stick to go by when it comes to transporting a vehicle is going to be the Grey Cat buggy. If you look at the 135C with nothing else around it to give it some kind of sense of scale, then fitting a small vehicle inside of it doesn't seem like it's too far-fetched of an idea. But once you get the Grey Cat up to the ramp, you'll see that it's not going to go in. It doesn't even come close. This is going to be the same for the Dragonfly and the Nox. Just as the 125A was meant to be more of a competitor for the Mustang, the 135C is meant to be more of a competitor for the Aurora. But I'd argue that since it has 6 SCUs of cargo space, that puts it more on par with the Mustang. The only thing about the Mustang is that its cargo isn't fully carried internally. Even when retracted, the cargo boxes are still visible from the rear of the ship. So any onlooker can know with a glance exactly what you're carrying and how much of it you have. Well, the 135C's cargo bay is fully enclosed, which means that any boxes you're hauling are going to be fully covered, and thus protected by the ship's hull from all sides. It's also going to be hidden from the prying eyes of the general public, so if they want to know what you're carrying, they're going to have to scan your ship to find out. I can see the 135C being more appealing to people who plan to start earning UEC by hauling cargo. It has literally three times the capacity of the 100i or the 125A, which can make a real difference when you're first starting out. The joke that's most commonly being said about the 100 series is that it's the kind of ship that makes you want to go buy something from the 300 series. But as the game progresses, I found myself looking at ships less from the perspective of being something that you're going to get in exchange for crowdfunding the game, and more from the perspective of a person who's going to be playing the game for the first time. For them, their starter ship is going to have a huge impact on their gameplay. And the better a ship's ability matches your personality, temperament, and playstyle, the better time you're going to have grinding your way to your first dedicated ship. The Aurora and the Mustang represents the extremes of what starter ships are capable of. And now the 100 series presents a mid-range option for the people who want a vessel that has a little of both of what those ships have to offer. And you can go the inexpensive route by picking the 100i, which comes with almost everything that the 100 series has to offer, but at a cheaper cost. I like to think of this as taking the minimalist approach. If you want to have more of an edge in combat, then it would be an easy choice to upgrade to the 125A for the faster speed and extra missiles. While people who are more interested in cargo hauling than combat would naturally gravitate towards the 135C. Well, that's going to be it for this comparison about the 100 series. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, because without their help, I wouldn't be able to afford to put the time and effort I do into making these videos. If you'd like to become a patron, then you'll be able to find a link to my Patreon site in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and take care.